starting college, are you? You know, new beginnings, starting adulthood, and let's not forget the freshman 15. Oh, you don't know what the freshman 15 is? Well, I'll tell you. The freshman 15 is a proven phenomenon that in your first year of college, you gain 15 pounds as a freshman. This can be caused by many factors, including late night snacks, stress eating, less exercise, and even independence and not exactly knowing how to cook healthy foods on your own. But don't worry, today we're going to show you some healthy alternatives on how to beat the freshman 15. The theme for today's show is the paleo diet. People who follow the paleo diet basically believe that our stomachs were designed to take in foods that the cavemen during the Paleolithic times were able to find and eat in order to survive. Not understanding? Let me give you an example. For instance, a caveman back in the Paleolithic era would not find a random candy bar laying around. Instead, he might find some fish in an ocean that he could eat to survive. And people following the paleo diet would eat similar foods. Today, we will be cooking a delicious breakfast, lunch, snack, and dinner following the paleo diet. Please enjoy! Alright, so welcome to our breakfast special. Um, to hurry things up a little bit, I already um, cracked two eggs into this bowl. I whisked it until it was um, had some bubbles in it and it was fully mixed. And then I just poured it into our um, pan, so that's where we are now. It's going to take a teeny bit for it to cook, so um, before we do that, we are going to cut some bacon into it. We're going to be basically making an omelette with some bacon in it for um, protein because breakfast is the most important meal of the day and you need to have a lot of protein. So just um, cut your pieces of bacon as, as big as you want them. And then all you're going to want to do is take all your bacon bits and then put them into your egg which should be ready to flip soon, so I'm just going to keep cutting them a little bit more since we have a little bit more time. And like I said, this, um, this meal is going to have a lot of protein in it, which is good because breakfast is supposed to start you off with every day and everything. And then even though the paleo diet doesn't exactly, um, like fruit isn't really a big part of it, it's also important to have a little bit of fruit. So if you have one orange, then um, that, that would be fine. All right, so now that we have our bacon bits pretty much um, Cut up, we're just gonna go put that into our egg. I wanna wait a little bit longer because what's gonna happen is I'm gonna probably flip the egg over. All right, all right, so now we're just going to um, shake the egg. And going over, um, I waited a little bit too long, but it's okay because it's gonna be delicious either way. You're just gonna flip it over, let it cook a little more. Turn the heat down a little bit. And one more time, just in case. Make sure it's a little bit golden. And then once you think it's cooked, we can just um, go ahead and put that on the plate. Ooh, look at that, nice and steamy, delicious. And then all you're going to want to do is cut up your orange. Just have one or two slices. Because on the paleo diet, if you were to find a um, back in caveman days. If you were to find like a fruit tree, you might be able to find an orange or two for breakfast. So there we go. Just one or two slices over here. And then to complete the breakfast, you're going to want to get, now part of the paleo diet is you can't have any regular milk. It has to be completely hormone free and organic. So um, it's a little bit more expensive, obviously, but at the same time, it's way out with the disadvantages. So um, basically this is your completed breakfast. You don't really need any salt because it's really just that good. And um, Last but not least, I think that it's most important to just taste your meal and see what it tastes like. Mmm. Very good.
Hunting fish is a very crucial part of the paleo diet. Why? Because there was plentiful food back in the day when cavemen lived. Um, without fish, it would be very hard to get meat. And so that is why I made this spear. You need a spear so that you can, you can hunt fish. Um, when you make your spear, make sure you have a, a sharp tip so that you can puncture the, the fish very, very well and very easily. You don't want a fish to get away and you have to do it very swiftly. Ah! So now that you have your fish, what you want to do is you want to find a nice cutting board. Place it like so, and then you want to start cutting it up. And then what you should end up is something like this. Your fish all cut up. And then you want to move on to the cooking stage. So now that you have your filleted fish, what you want to do is you want to take it over to your skillet, and then you just want to place it in there. And then you, you want to turn your oven up to high. So now that now that it's up at high, you want to you want you really want to start shaking shaking your skillet around. Make make sure make sure every side of the fish gets cooked. You don't want any side to get raw. It'll also, just be plain nasty. So now let's just let this sit for a while. So when you buy your kale from the marketplace, it's probably gonna come in a bunch like this. But what you want to do is you kind of want to separate it out onto your plate so that what it's what it's going to do is it's going to surround your fish sticks. So really, it's used for decoration, but the kale itself is actually pretty healthy for you, and it's a very essential part of the, of the paleo diet. So now that you have your, your kale your kale dish nicely, nicely prepared, you want to take it over to your, your cooked fish. So your, your fish should come out like this, very similar to fish sticks. And then what you want to do is, you want to, you want to take either a fork or maybe your spear, and then, and then just kind, of, just kind of, just kind of place it on there. Usually, usually I just, I just kind of let it, let it fall. No, see, and then you could just eat it like that, but I like to nicely decorate it. You know, make, make it look, make it look kind of pretty, to kind of separate it around. And so in the end, you should come up with something like this. Your nicely, nice paleo diet. Welcome to the snack portion of our food show. Um, today I'll be showing you how to make trail mix. So in the paleo diet you can't have a lot of sugars and fruits. So we have unsalted and unsugared dried cranberries, um, mixed berries and almonds in here. We have unsalted almonds right here and then uh, sliced almonds that are unsalted. Um, so, when we're going to make trail mix, we're going to want to uh, pull them all into a bowl. And then um, we're going to want to stir it together like this. Um, and then there we go, there's trail mix. and I am co-founder of Quiznos. Um, I've been cooking for 35 years um, and today I'll be showing you how to prepare and cook some bison ribs with a little bit of some salsa. Old family recipe when we used to hunt bison back in the day. Alright so first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna cut these bison ribs into uh, single ribs so that it's uh, easier to eat. I just like it. I prefer it like that. Uh, so let's go ahead and cut these bad boys. Alright, so next uh, I'm going to go ahead and fill up this pot full of water. And uh, after I'm done filling it up with water, or actually I want to fill it up just enough so I can submerge those ribs in there. And after these ribs are submerged, I'm going to go ahead and uh, add some rosemary, some Mediterranean rosemary. All right. Then I'm going to add some red chili peppers from Trader Joe's. Then I'm going to add some uh, black pepper from Kirkland. And I'm going to add some garlic pepper right after that. Make sure that all these um, salt, these uh, spices, that they don't have any salts or sugars because on the paleo diet we don't eat salt or add salt. Or sugar to our food, alright? 
smell and taste. Um, some black pepper right here. You always gotta go black and never go back, you know what I mean? <laughs> Crush some of that in there. And then we're gonna add some red chili pepper because Augie likes it hot. Now we're gonna go ahead and all right. So we're about to turbo boil this bad boy. Let's go ahead and turn him on. I'm gonna go ahead and leave this bad boy sitting here for uh, about an hour or so, getting nice and tender. Let's go ahead and stir these little ribbies. Get those spices going around. Mm-hmm. Yeah, this looks scrumptious. Mm. You know, we to eat this, my my goodness. So we got some onions right here. We got some cilantro, tomatoes, jalapeno, some uh, zucchinis, and some uh, and a lemon. We're going to make some salsa with all this good stuff. Yeah, yeah, woohoo, yeah. too much of it because um, you may not like spicy food so just go ahead and put a little bit in there first and then if you want to be even spicier you can go ahead and put some more in there uh, let's go ahead and throw some black pepper in there remember black's always better it in there for? We're going to put it in here in the uh, oven for 30 minutes. At what temperature? 400 degrees Fahrenheit. I'm throwing some of the salsa on here. Get some of that nice flavor. Go ahead and do it for all of them. Let's go ahead and put this into that. This is the ribs. That's the other. So high tech, oh my goodness. All right, let's go ahead and take this guy out. Damn. Juicy. It's hot though. Look at that. Look at that. Alright. Let's go ahead and put some salsa on there. Put them on the side just so we can get in some vegetables with our meal. This concludes the dinner portion of this show. I hope you like it and I hope you try this dish at home and I hope you enjoy the dish. This concludes our segment for today. Thank you. Thanks for watching.